first order differential equation by using the quantitative method in which we have analyzed it by using certain formulas and then we have developed the quantities and then it was interpreted and it was also plotted the solution of it however there is another approach that we can use and that is the qualitative approach in which we will make a certain diagram which is known as phase diagram and we will see that there will be some phases in it so this is a qualitative aspect of the time path not the quantitative that we have already done by using certain formulas and solving them quantitatively and this qualitative aspect is actually the phase diagram phase diagram conveys the dynamic properties of a differential equation so we will be understanding about the dynamic properties of the differential equation that we are dealing with that is if we have a certain function that is y as a function of time and it will be an autonomous differential equation so that the derivative of that same function is just the function of y and not the function of t so mathematically it is more understandable that the derivative of a certain function is only dependent upon y and not t where t is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable so we can understand that it is uh, going to be a function of the dependent variable only and not the independent variable now this can be a little confusing with other uh, similar concepts so let's try to compare them and separate them because they are similar but they are not the same the first thing that we have understood is the differential equation in which the rate of change of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable was a function of both that is the dependent variable and the independent variable the other thing that we learned before was the time path in which the dependent variable was a function of the independent variable and there was no derivative term because it was the solution and in the solution we do not have any derivative or differential term however this new thing is known as the phase diagram and it is also called as the autonomous differential equation because it doesn't have the independent variable in it and it is only a function of the variable y which is the dependent variable the rate of change is there so it is a differential equation however it depends upon not both of the variables but on only y variable which is the dependent variable so after understanding what is in the background of phase diagram that is the autonomous differential equation let us try to take a numerical example of it this is a numerical example of it we can rearrange it and write it in a way in which uh, we can put y on the left hand side when we do so uh, its coefficient will become uh, minus 1 which is now a value of a and the value of b is there on the right hand side which was there already that is minus 7 so we can use these two values in order to verify the results of the phase diagram so now we are going towards the phase diagram this is the graph of the phase diagram on x-axis we have the dependent variable y and on y-axis we have dy over dt that is the rate of change of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable so when we plot it it will look like this in this case because we remember that this equation that we are taking as an example is a linear differential equation so a straight line is expected as we have seen here we can make it simply by putting the values we can make a schedule here because we are to make this diagram in which the rate of change will be dependent upon y so we are going to put various values of y and we are going to get dy over dt so for example minus 5 and then 0 and then 5 I'm skipping a few values here uh, you, you know that there are some values in between and now we will get various values of dy over dt 
here because you know we'll be just putting the value of y and dy over dt can be found and these values can be written here so now I have this table that can be plotted on the graph as we have done here so after th doing this uh, you can do this uh, yourself the development of this table and then this graph will appear now let us uh, try to make sense of various phases in it you can see here that this is the origin and above it is the value of dy over t dy over dt which is positive and below the origin it will be negative so any uh, part of this diagram which is above the origin will have a positive value of dy over dt which is plotted on y-axis so for all of this that is from here till there all of this uh, part of the diagram shows that y will increase because time always increases and passes so y will increase because the rate of change of y over time is positive so y will increase so when y increases as you know that on x-axis we have this variable y the dependent variable so we will move in this direction because it, the value of y is increasing as shown by this uh, positive range of the dy over dt but the opposite possibility is that the phase diagram the phase this phase of the phase diagram is below the origin and when it is below the origin the value will be negative the value of dy over dt so it means that time when it passes and it does it doesn't stop the value of y will decrease and when the value of y decreases it is on x-axis and when it decreases we move towards left because the lesser or smaller values will occur here this means that the left movement will take place which is shown by this arrow whereas above the origin the movement was towards right as the value of y was increasing at this point definitely there is neither po movement towards right or uh, nor towards left because it is the point where the rate of change of y over t is zero so there is no tendency to change however if we talk about this area or that area the movement is away from each other it means that it is a situation of a repeller where they are moving away from each other in this case you can understand that this point will not be achieved because there is repulsion on the left hand side and the right hand side so the convergence will not take place in this case here we have tabulated whatever we have observed before x intercept this was the x intercept before x intercept the phase line was below the x axis as you you can see this part is below and due to that the value of the y variable uh, variable on y axis was negative which meant that the value of y decreased as the time increased so this means that um, there will be movement towards left and we saw that with the help of this thick arrow now after this x-intercept the phase line was above x-axis and since it was above x-axis its positive values occurred and it means that as the time passes the value of y will increase it means that y is increasing and its value on x-axis will be towards right so the movement will be towards right as we can see with the help of this arrow thick arrow so it verifies that there is repulsion from x-intercept and there will be divergence and dynamic instability will be the result or in other words unstable intertemporal equilibrium 
will exist in this situation. Now we can verify this qualitative analysis with the help of quantitative analysis that we have done before. You just remember the standard form and compare it with the given equation and then you remember that this is the value of A which is negative and we must remember that the positive value of A will give us a convergent situation. You can remember it from the formula, this formula, that whenever A was positive, the answer w became negative due to this sign and then there was exponential decay, which is the uh, type of graph that gives rise to convergence. So if this A is already negative, this will become positive with this uh, sign of formula and then there will be exponential growth due to this overall positive result. Therefore, in this case, the value of A is negative and this negative sign will become positive with this negative sign and then there will be divergence, that is exponential growth will take place. So this is also verifying whatever we have understood with the help of the uh, graphical analysis that there is divergence in this certain equation. So this was the divergent case. Now let's take the uh, convergent case. Here the autonomous differential equation is there because on the right hand side there is only y only. No, no other variable is there. y is the dependent variable. We are rearranging it and rearranging gives us the value of A and value of B. Now we can come to the diagram which is the phase diagram. Definitely we will plot Y the dependent variable on X axis on which the rate of change of Y is dependent over time. So we have to make a schedule just like you did for the last example. You can do it here because you will be putting various values of y and you will get various values of dy over dt. When you do so, you will get these two variables, these values, then you can plot these values and you will get this kind of diagram. And this is the x-intercept that we have already observed in the last graph above or uh, before this x-intercept the graph is here and this graph is having positive values of dy over dt because this is origin and above origin there are positive values and below origin there are negative values so dy over dt is positive here which means that as the time passes the value of y will increase and since the value of y is on x-axis the increase will be represented with a rightward arrow towards right. And the other possibility is below the x-intercept where the value of dy over dt is definitely negative in the negative range which means that as time passes the value of y will decrease. And when this decreases it is going to move in the left direction where the value of y will decrease. Definitely on x-axis the value decreases when we move towards the left and increases when we move towards right. So this leftward arrow will show that the value of y will decrease. So now if we combine the effect of these two arrows they are signifying that the movement will be towards the x-intercept because they are moving in this kind of direction. So this is suitably called as an attractor because the phase line there are you know uh, there is convergence in this phase line where the two phases are getting combined so it is likely to give us some convergence before x intercept uh, you can read this by pausing the video and you can see that phase line above x axis had this positive value of rate of change of y over time which meant that y will increase over time. Conversely, y will decrease over time, which is happening below the x-intercept and after the x-intercept, in other words. So, there will be uh, a case of uh, an attractor.
towards the x-intercept and there will be convergence, there will be dynamic stability and there will be stable intertemporal equilibrium which in other words is known as the steady state growth in which the different rates of growth or the rates of growth of different variables will remain the same. It means that they will move with the same growth rate and if both of them are moving in, in this direction for example they will remain in the same position after some time. So this is steady growth and this is uh, a desirable situation in economic analysis when it comes to dynamic analysis because the rates of growth are the same for the variables and they will remain in the state of equilibrium. So this was a graphical analysis of the differential equation that was the autonomous differential equation. Now we can use the quantitative method in order to verify the answer. This is the standard form and it requires that A is positive for the convergent outcome. So rearranging it we get this 1 over 2 into y and 1 over 2 is the value of A. This shows that there is convergence and here the uh, qualitative method is getting verified because the value of A is positive which verifies that there will be exponential decay and hence there will be convergence. So this is how we can qualitatively analyze a differential equation by rearranging it into an, a qualitative, um, an autonomous differential equation and then we can also verify it by using our knowledge of quantitative analysis that is by judging the value of A and forecasting if it is the case of uh, exponential decay or exponential growth.